Great Scooter, we are done, and then I'll give Prof. Um, very good. Thank you so much. Professor Lonya. Thank you. Uh, the Prime Cabinet Secretary and colleagues. <laughs> I'm, I'm very proud, sir, having listened the way you are responding and the way you are handling the concerns that are coming from Kenyans. I've been one of the facilitators and the, one of the we participated in the forum that I've been going since yesterday, uh, especially in the Centre for Democracy. And uh, I am so happy with the interaction that we are setting for us as Kenyans. And this is the way to go, so that we can be able to ask real data that we think we need to be asked. Uh, we do know and we do all the that we know. So what we learned as we were discussing on democracy here. See, we don't want to ask Kenya as we were multi-party state for 11 years. We were single democracy in single state for 50 years. And we have countries that have been having multi-party for the last 200 years, 150 years. So to me, I want to propose that uh, the open pool of space that we are seeing now, coming from the current government and the, the future governments, we really need to participate as Kenyans to make sure that we, we propose what we think should, should come out to be free for the sake of our people, but not also but we have common values that don't change. So this can be for us to be able to be, to be one. And we should not fast track our democracy to be equivalent to those that have life for only 200 years. We can't. So the challenges we have, we continue moving together, but we need to have some cards. And I'm proud of the Prime Minister Secretary and all the others who are in government and those of us who are also outside are putting the the nation at the heart of our movement so that we don't go beyond that. Otherwise, I'm, 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 I'm happy to be living and tell my friend, Professor Vivita, Vivita is born as a round. I am on leave for a few more years before I come back. <laughs> 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 I don't know, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Therefore, I would love to welcome his uh, excellence uh, so that he can be able to respond and to give us his partnership. Welcome, sir. Okay. Um, I'll start with the Sam Mora uh, uh, from Granton and Thornton. Um, I think um, this is a complex issue, as I said earlier, the issue of uh, the subsidy and around the fuel uh, challenges. When the government of Ruto, which I am serving in, took the decision on the subsidy, is because we realized that the subsidy was causing more hemorrhage to the economy than what it intended to cure. All right? And I gave the figure of about 20 billion per month, which was supposed to be raised to fund the subsidy. It was clearly not sustainable. Clearly there are some teething problems, even as we speak, on how we can improve on the fuel supply flow uh, in the country. And that we shall do. But clearly, we are not going back to the road of subsidies. Okay? There are other issues uh, that relate to the foreign exchange issues. And conversations are going on in government. Uh, to what extent uh, should there be intervention or no intervention? So that if that opens up appropriately, uh, the market will help in stabilizing this particular issue. So it's a conversation and a thought process uh, that we are going in, um, in into government. The others have heard you. 
uh, the issue of how uh, we can continue to make sure that unnecessary expenses or expenditure is literally being eliminated. So we will work on that part. Uh, Salma Ocheng, on the issue of whether parties should merge or not, uh, we are here at the center for multi-party democracy. The center for multi-party democracy. I don't know what more I can say. <laughs> to enhance democracy, political parties are recognized in our constitution. They are then cultivated. They have structures. And if there is going to be any alteration whatsoever, there are democratic processes rooted in the constitutions of those particular parties that will guide the process for such a decision if it becomes necessary. So at this stage, what I would like to tell people, if you are to ask me, the competing challenges we have, we have the drought, we have the fight to bring the cost of living down. We have to deal with the pending bills and so forth. To me, the issue of a merger or non merger is actually at the bottom of the priorities when we leverage what we are supposed to be doing. So I think let us move forward and see how we can move forward without diverting attention from the core issues. And the core issues, in my view, are those that are being talked about in this forum. Now, let me come to uh, Anne. Was it Anne? Yes. Anne, and to some extent, Dixon Ogola. Um, you have raised a very fundamental issue about offices in public space and so forth. I think it's healthy that this conversation takes place. All right? So I want to make it clear to the people here is that from a personal level, if I speak specifically to Masaila Mudavadi, I want to make it very clear that there is no public expenditure that has occurred in the conversation around Tesi Musalia. And I don't see any public expenditure occurring because I fully appreciate that activities of this nature are not government activities. They are social, philanthropic interventions that we make. And for the avoidance of doubt, Mrs. Musabi has been at this process, whether in government, whether I was in government, or whether I was not in government. And we shall not stop supporting people in any part of the country through charitable efforts. But I am very clear that it shall not be at the expense of the exchequer. Now, there are some cases that you say were dropped. I will be very careful here because this is an independent office the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. I'm not privy to the details in the files that are before him. So 
if there are any issues, his office remains the best office to be able to respond to those particular issues. I can only make comments that will be viewed as second guessing or presumptuous. So uh, it would be better that uh, at an appropriate time, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions will handle that directly. The same goes for the ESCC. The ESCC will also explain itself when the time comes. I don't know if uh, Ogola and others, if you will go back in history, because that one I know is safe territory, I can talk to it without difficulty, but uh, the retired uh, president, I think in his first term, either his first term or second term, he went to Parliament and he spoke to Parliament and tabled a report about ESCC cases and when they are supposed to be done, when they are not supposed to be done, and all that. It is, if you go back to the handset, you will see that report. And if I recollect, that created a very big problem for him because it was perceived that he had interfered with the mandate of the ESCC. And indeed, some of the cases that he cited, the lawyers, who are very bright, went to court and said that there was no due process, no free process, and some of those cases collapsed. So it is better that independent agencies like the ESCC handle the matter independently, and from where I stand, it would not be prudent uh, for me to comment on that. Uh, the issue of the judiciary is the same. We may not like what the judges have ruled, but it is their domain. It is a constitutional position and they are there to make their decisions they may be in our favor they may be against us but where we are as a country that respects the rule of law we have no option but to accept the decisions of the court and more so when it was the last court, the highest court, making a decision. So, I'm not a lawyer, but if there was any reason that somebody wanted to review, I think the lawyers can argue if there are ways of seeking a review of something like that. I'm not an expert in that field, so I cannot speak to it. But we cannot run away from the fact that we need to respect uh, the constitutional lanes as they have been provided for. Uh, I am a cabinet secretary. Properly vetted by parliament, ratified by parliament, then gazetted and formally given my letter of appointment by the President of the Republic of Kenya in accordance with the Constitution. Mr. Ogola, I would be happy to serve you when you come to my office if the need arises. So, um, the final question uh, that I want to put to Miriam. I remember you, Miriam, 
uh, we were with you in uh, some of the various fora uh, where you stood out uh, very honorably on behalf of the people with disabilities uh, and I think your message is clear that uh, it has the issue of dealing with those challenges need to be accelerated uh, so that we don't use the word progressive but we just look at it and say let us implement and let us do it very fast thank you I think that was my final bit uh, but I want to say uh, to the vice chairman and to the facilitators Asante Sana thank you for your reactions thank you for your comments this has been very enriching and uh, God willing if my health is perfect, I hope I will be here again with you on another occasion. Asante sana and God bless you all. Thank you. I think you deserve a much better hand clap more than that we've done. Uh, we, we have...